Hey, future respiratory therapist. So I got a question a while back um, over what to do if your patient self-extubates. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Unfortunately, I can't find the comment, so I don't know who to give credit to for the question. So I apologize for that. But nonetheless, it's a great topic. Um, it's going to be probably a milestone in your, your future respiratory therapy career. You're going to be out there. You're going to be the greatest respiratory therapist to ever step in the ICU. And you're going to have a patient self-extubate. And you're going to get super nervous because what do I do now? So let's just talk about what do we do when a patient self-extubates. And it happens. It's, okay. it's not the end of the world. It's not ideal and it shouldn't happen a lot. But occasionally it happens and occasionally you have to deal with this issue. Okay, so here we go. The first thing to do when your patient self-extubates is to this. Stay calm. Stay calm. Calm. Get to the room as fast as you can and enter the room in a calm fashion. You got to understand the patient might be high anxiety at that level. They may be freaking out. The nurse may be freaking out. And the room and the situation needs a calming figure. That's your role. We're talking an airway problem here. And you're the airway expert. So you are the one that's going to calm the situation and figure out what our next steps are, okay? So as you walk in the room, you need to be, you need to observe your patient. That's the first thing you do when you walk in a room. Just look at your patient. See how they look. This is going to drive your decision making from that point forward. If the patient is agonal breathing and is cyanotic and they look like crap, then you need to get your Ambu bag and mask and stabilize this patient's ventilation until we can get them reintubated. So that's your first thing. Just look at the patient. Glance at your vital signs. If they're stable and your, your oxygen saturations are stable and your patient looks okay. Now we're talking about ICU patients here, so none of them look like me and you walking around. But if they look okay, then you may not have to reintubate this patient. Which brings me to my next point. Know your patient. You got to know your patient and you have to know the vent settings they were on. It's a, it's, it's a very good possibility that if this person self-extubated from high pressure control settings with high PEEP and high FiO2 with a crappy PF ratio, they're most likely going to be reintubated. If they were a severe acidosis, a severe respiratory acidosis, and then they self-extubate from full mechanical support, they're probably going to need to be reintubated. The only way, you know, only way you can be prepared for that is if you know your patient as you enter that room. So you enter the room, you observe them, and you're thinking, what was this patient on? As you're walking to the room, oh, this was the patient that was on a PEEP of 18? Now you're much better prepared and you're in a mindset of probably reintubating than probably not. So know your patients as you head to your room and as you enter your room and observe your patients and look at them. Okay. Now, once you get in the room, you're going to want to do the exact same thing you would do if you had extubated the patient. You're going to help them with secretion removal. So you're going to get your yonkers and you're going to suction out their oral cavity. They probably have a lot of secretions in their mouth from this self-extubation. They may be actually actively spitting them out. Help them remove those secretions. And then assess your patient. Okay, listen to breath sounds. Listen for strider. Now, you got to remember, this patient just pulled a balloon, practically a cuff, an inflated cuff, up past their vocal cords, which is not a very large opening. And so there may be some, some edema that's, that's resulting from this action. And that's going to show up in the form of strider. And we know how to treat strider. We treat, we treat it with cool mist aerosol first. If, if it's moderate strider, then we're going to go to racemic epinephrine. And then if it's severe or marked strider, then we're going to have to, again, reintubate this patient. So you're going to suction out the airway. You're going to assess your patient. Listen to breath sounds. Assess for strider. 
And then ask yourself, what does this patient need from me now? So maybe the patient doesn't need to be reintubated. Maybe the course of action is not grab your AMBU bag, grab your mask, and start start uh, uh, start bagging the patient. Let's say that's not the case. That's an easy scenario. The patient looks like crap, cyanotic. You know we're reintubating. Severe strider, bag, reintubate the patient as soon as possible. But what if they don't? What if they don't need to be reintubated? What if the patient's like, hey, they look pretty good. What do you say? You look at your nurse and you go, they look pretty good. I'm, I'm kind of shocked, right? Or maybe they're a 21-year-old drug overdose patient that you were going to be extubating shortly, at, shortly in a little bit of time anyways. So maybe they don't need to be reintubated. So ask yourself, what do they need from me? And again, what settings were they on? Look at your vitals, look at your pulse oximetry, look at what your saturations are. They're probably going to need some administration of some oxygen therapy. Now, if you, when we started back here, you get the call, patient in 10 self-extubated. You start working in room 10. It would be smart if you pass by the RT cart or your supply closet to grab maybe a cannula and a non-rebreather. And then when you get in the room and they need some oxygen support, then you have those tools with you and you put them on either a nasal, small, uh, you know, a four liter nasal cannula, whatever it is, whatever they need. Or you can put them on a non-rebreather. Maybe you, the plan was to extubate them later, but we were going to extubate to a high flow nasal cannula, to an airvo. So put them on a non-rebreather, Go get the Airvo, bring it back, set up the Airvo, and get them switched over to the Airvo. And then you can get them back down to their 50% with a flow of 50 liters per minute or whatever it might be. And so you just got to understand that things are going to be happening very, very quickly. So it's your job to stay calm and to slow everything down. Look at your patient. Know the settings they were on. Suction or oral cavity, help them remove those secretions. Assess for strider and be prepared to quickly administer a racemic epi treatment if that's indicated. Be able to quickly assess oxygenation needs so that you can get them on the proper oxygen therapy equipment. Maybe if, if it's a question mark like, well, are they going to make it? Maybe they're a little tachypnic and you're concerned about the, the, the depths of their breathing. They're, they maybe you've taken shallow tidal volumes with a very high risk. Let's say somebody's breathing 28 times a minute with shallow tidal volumes and you're concerned. We're not going to reintubate immediately, but we're considering it. And we're like, you know what? Let's just get a gas in 15 minutes. Then be prepared to keep an eye on that patient. Stay with that patient. And then be prepared to know that maybe I need to get a gas to assess if they're maintaining a normal acid-base balance and if we're oxygenating effectively. Now, you don't need a gas to assess adequate oxygenation. You can do that with a pulse oximeter. If they're on a 40%, if they're on a 4-liter cannula and they're satting 97%, you don't need an ABG to tell you that your PaO2 is good. But you do need a gas to tell you what your CO2 level is and your pH level. So be prepared to possibly assess... Uh, and to draw an ABG and know that this is probably your priority right now. And then, at, so, so we put that on the board after Strider. We got O2 needs and possible ABG. And then the last point, I'm just going to put it right here, is I'm just going to put therapy or treatment right here. Because the last thing you need to do, after you've decided that we're not going to reintubate this patient. There's no severe strider. There's no impending ventilatory failure. We think this patient can stay off the vent, so let's not reintubate them. Let's ask ourselves, do they need an airvo? Do they need a BiPAP? What are we going to do to, to, to support this patient from here on out? And then if that is nothing, if it's just like, hey, let's just put them on oxygen therapy, then now you take yourself back to your, your basic assessment of your patient and asking yourself, what does this patient need from me now? Maybe they need help with secretion clearance. Maybe they need, maybe their x-ray showed atelectasis and they need some positive airway pressure. Maybe they need a Metaneb a Q4 to keep them off the vent. You know, one of the greatest things, one of the greatest joys I've ever found is having a patient self-extubate and then me saying, give, let, give me a chance to keep this patient off the vent. Let's not reintubate. Give me a chance. And then I work my butt off and that person stays off the vent. And that gets them out of the ICU quicker and home faster. 
that's a joy. And that's what we're here to do as respiratory therapists. Okay? So remember, stay calm, observe, know your patient, suction secretions, assess for strider, of course, listen to breath sounds, assess oxygenation, assess ventilation, all of this in a timely fashion, and then get them on the appropriate therapy to keep them off the vent moving forward. Okay? Hey, guys, I hope this, I hope this helps. Um, leave me a comment below if you have any specific questions. If something doesn't make sense, you guys know I'll address it. Okay? Best wishes, guys.